Uh, thank you, Professor Greer asked questions regarding how to be a scientist. So I'm going to follow uh, her presentation, ask you questions, make sure everyone actually did homework and listen to her carefully. And so the question here is, I'd like to show uh, all, uh, all of you, raise your hand if you have at least one computer. Great, and so now let's raise your hand if you, have, you think you have 10 computers. Okay, that's good. Okay, now raise your hand if you think you have over 100 computers. Okay, great. So two, three, four. Okay, great. So that actually is the question we ask you here is probably you haven't realized the computers is everywhere. If you only consider the laptop or iPad or kind of things, that's only very limited view about the computers. So you can see here right now, everywhere nowadays in your daily life, you can bump into some kind of smartness. And every time you have the smartness, there's a computer behind of it, right? It's gonna be something that help us to do the work for us. So now let's back to the que fundamental questions. What does computer do? What does computer do? Okay. Okay. Okay, you write you. Press, like, right. Very good answer. So fundamentally, computer. What does computer do? Yes. Question. Okay. Yes. Let's go there. What does computer? What? <coughs> Calculation. Exactly. That's how this whole our computer started, right? Back in the very good old, old days, our sensors would try to count the number of deer they hunted. So they have to have ways to count those numbers, remember numbers. Guess what kind of computer they use? Yes, right? Uh, well, what is the calculator they have at the time? But they don't have TP at the time, right? What kind of computers they use to help them count the number of deer? Yes, that's right. They use the fingers, right? We have fingers, that's why we start with decimal number systems because we have 10 fingers. So that's how it started. So now let's look at it, how the other part of here is invested. Of course, here is a rover, a Curiosity rover that currently is still living on Mars and doing different explorations. That represents most of the ones computer technology nowadays in the world to do something very useful. But started with this, hum and we initially with the fingers and all stuff. Then we have this another level of computers with so-called abacus or counting frames. That's how we started. Started using some kind of tools to help us automate the process counting the numbers. And from there in the 80s uh, centuries, the uh, British mathematician, the Charles Babbage, invented first the computer. So this computer is based on the mechanical technology of the time. It helped us to solve the differential equations and, and at the time. So what happens there is because limited by the technology, this design never been implemented, this Babbage mach machine never been built. But nevertheless, one of, one of the Charles' most famous students is uh, Ada Lovas. She actually started to write a program to control this computer to solve differential equations. That's the birth of the software engineer, a software programmer, is Ada. Right. From there, in the, uh, 1945, two professors from University of Pennsylvania, they developed the first electronic computers. And you can see this computer is humongous. It's uh, almost like the, the <coughs> space of the twice as much as this big room. They use a vacuum tube and to help us to implement it. All, all it does is also try to solve differential equations and then they calculate the tra trajectories for the missiles at that time. From there, fast forward in 1971, the Intel, after three years they founded, founded, they invented the first microprocessor called 4004. They only have over 3,000 uh, 3, transistors and it actually only runs about two kilohertz. That is clock rate to help to produce. Nevertheless, this microprocessor 
really start a new era in the modern computer field. So 1982, because the IBM PC was so popular, the Time Magazine named the PC a computer as man of the year. From there, fast forward, as everyone knows it here, powered by machine learning and AI technology, as AlphaGo the first time beat the best Go player in the world, and that's again, that lead us to today, we're talking about what happens if computers they start as a tool of the computer, now they actually start to replace us, they threaten us, right? So where will we go? How we can control, how we can develop this relationship among these different things? Well, this is another chart I'm gonna show you is uh, so-called Moore's Law. How many of you have heard about the Moore's Law? Great, so Moore's Law was coined by uh, Dr. Golden Moore, who's also the Caltech alumnus. He actually, uh, three years after he co-founded Intel, he made observation. Basically, he was saying that the number of transistors, those small switches that can squeeze on this chip will double every one half year. Because of that, this chart here shows you in the very beginning is from 1970 when the microprocessor four zeros were first <coughs> born and to the, this point here, you can see this uh, increase of in exponential growth of the intelligence and the power of the microprocessors, right? With all of these different technology advancements and what we have here is back to this question. How many of you have read this book uh, by Arthur Clarke about 2001 and it was the Odyssey, right? So this held the one of the most intelligent computer in that novel, in that movie, was called Hell 9000. Essentially, the 9000 is so t intelligent <coughs> that became one part of the astronaut crew to explore Jupiter, right? And this computer is so powerful, so intelligent, in the point where the human has to force, was forced to kill it because there's some problems over there, right? So question for us is right now, when we have a lot of luxuries using the computers, how can we deal with more healthy relationship with this technology to help us to accomplish what we need to do? Of course, this is one of the options, right? <laughs> we're enslaved to this technology, we're addicted to it. And a lot of us, I guess, is really a big fan of the playing the games and the stuff, right? So how can we actually reverse this process and help us to make use of the technology healthily or positively? Well, to that, I'd like to share with you some of the stories here we talk about. We want to do a comparisons. So now we have here iPhone X. How many use the iPhone? Raise your hand. Okay, great. So we're trying to make comparison, okay, between the computers, uh, electronic brains in iPhone and electronic brains, computers, and the Curiosity rovers. Compare these two computers, which one do you think is more powerful? iPhone X, okay. So let's to be uh, do a scientific way, right? We used to try to do Apple to Curiosity comparison. Not Apple to Apple comparison, but you can see here, that lists the different tec technical specifications in terms of uh, these two computers. In terms of the speed, in terms of the memories, in terms of the powers and mass, everything. You can see the uh, A11, which a Mac processor powered iPhones beat every single place for this computer use the elect and Curiosity, which is Red 750. But can we see this iPhone's computer is more powerful? Okay. Well, so it depends how do you think, how do you define it's more powerful, right? Even in terms of running things faster and stuff, definitely that's more powerful. But guess what? In this case, which computer makes more contributions for the human being? Do something more useful. <laughs> Curiosity? IPhone X. IPhone X? IPhone X. Okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, so have all different opinions. That's good, right? That's good. But at least one thing we know that this Curiosity sent us millions of these pictures that help the scientists and all of us understand the universe, understand the world, help us to demystify a lot of theories unknowns, right? From that perspective, this Curiosity rover 
computers are much more powerful. And also it's more robust because it can survive over this very hostile uh, environment where radiations or vacuums in uh, fluctuations, temperatures, and so on and so forth, right? So that is the differences between these two, right? So as all of us, how can we actually try to make better use of the computers to do something more useful? Well, so here I want to share another story. Okay. So this girl here is called Clara Ma. She was the one named Curiosity Rover in <coughs> for this Mars uh, <coughs> MSL, Mars Science Laboratory. When she was submitted her essay in response to a competition, naming competition uh, started by NASA for naming this Mars rover, she was only sixth grader. Right. That was the picture on the left, was taken in <coughs> 2009 when she was invited to JPL and then to watch the landing of the MSL on Mars. So that is where in the Mars yard. The picture on the right hand side when she was senior, uh, she was a junior in high school and in 2014, she came to JPL working with me as a high school summer intern and started, wrote her first program in, in Python. So from that time, she was so inspired by this technology, she decided to continue to enforce <coughs> her definition to engage with STEM. So now she is a junior in Yale, working on the earth science and stuff and doing things she likes to become a scientist. So that's it what happens because of curiosity, because she's really interested in things what uh, <coughs> ahead of her, right? So that's where this curiosity, like Professor Grillo just mentioned, is very important for us. The other one is also when you have this Einstein and mentioned about this curiosity, because the curiosity helped him and to eventually to solve the problems of this about the universe and won Nobel Prize. So if you are very, even if you are very young, if you are curious about anything, don't stop. Don't thought by your parents saying, oh, it's not that bad, it's not that good. Always follow your heart, try to be curious, and try to follow. Don't have to wait until you go to college, or don't have to wait until you become Einstein, and don't wait until you have the job to start to pursue your curiosity, um, pursue your heart. So hopefully, we actually can do something, because last year, NASA already announced another opportunity to name the next Mars rovers, Mars 2020. So please watch the media and find out anytime we're going to start it to name uh, this new curiosity, a uh, new Mars rover, which is slated to launch in 2020 next year. Okay, with that, that's the really the universe is limited. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>